The fat bastard was on form again. <laughs> Classic Chubby Brown. You have to go back to the early 70s, and I was with a band, and the band always asked me to introduce the numbers, so that gave me a little bit of confidence to stand on a stage and to talk to an audience. Hey, I tell you what, the fucking women drivers here are very polite, aren't they? <laughs> Just pulled in front of one out there, and their hand gesture indicated to me she wanted to wank us off. <laughs> and then when I started getting single work, up and down the country, obviously the clubs, which is why I feel sorry for young comics today. They've got nowhere to die. But in them days, you know, it was rough. It was hard. But there again, if you want to be someone, you have to stick at it. And I was getting sent to these places, and suddenly I get a phone call. Uh, they're looking for stand-ups to do opportunity knocks and stuff like that, you know, junior showtime. So I applied, and I went right down to Birmingham on the train, uh, we all met in a room, and some of them comics are still around today, like Jimmy Carroll. Well, you know, then Little and Large, people like that, they were all in this room. Roy Walker, all looking for auditions. And I was doing okay, and I sat on the piano. I only knew a few chords. And during the, the song I was doing, the lid came down on my fingers. They thought that was part of the act, which it wasn't. I wasn't a good piano player any road, so it made a good excuse. But I told a story about a fella who only had one ass. Now, everybody in the studio fell about laughing. And after the audition, one of the assistant producers come up to see me and said, Roy, uh, you know you were really funny, but obviously you've spoilt yourself by saying ass. I said, all right, OK. <laughs> so that was the end of that career. He's just one of those comedians, like, you, you just can't beat him because he's, he's patchwork quilt, basically. It started in, it was the early 70s, and I remember it as if it was yesterday, and it was two days ago. I was in Leicester, I was doing a club in Leicester, and we had a lot of glue sniffers at the front, a lot of idiots, blokes shouting, your mother's a cunt, you know, stuff like that, really offensive. He could give it, but he couldn't take it. And I was saying things to him like, uh, I bet you when you were born, your father took that bucket of shit back to the sewerage farm. Are you wearing a baseball cap so you know which end to wipe, you ugly twat? And he jumped up and threw a pint over us. So I had to stand there for the next hour and my bollocks sticking to my legs. So it was about two or three days later, I was at my sister's club. I say my sister's club, she was a barmaid. And she was wiping the bar down with these towels, these uh, bar towels. And I said, have you got any spare of those? Because uh, I'll buy some off you. And George, who was my guitarist in the band, his mother, bless her, was a seamstress. So I took her this big pile of towels. I said, can you make me a suit out of this lot? And that was the first suit. After the bar towel, I uh, decided, I passed one of these uh, draper shops, I saw all these coloured curtains in the window. I thought, you know, that'd be a good idea. I bought a load of material and sewed it together. Made sort of an eider down, and then made a suit out of it. And it worked. And over the last 40 years, God, I, I remember one, one time I had 19 suits. But then people would come along and say, can we have your suit for charity? We're going to raffle it off, for, you know, wherever. I've got about three or four left now. But uh, it's lighter, it's easier to move in, and it's famous. Iconic, <laughs> iconic. That's, that's, that's who Roy Chubby Brown is. You know, a lot of old comedians used to model themselves on other comedians. You know, people said, because of the suit, are you trying to be Max Miller? No, I wasn't trying to be. I didn't even know who Max Miller was when I started off. I'd never heard of Max Miller. Uh, I mean, you look at comedians today, they say, oh, uh, Lee Evans is the new Norman Wisdom, Jimmy Carr's the new Bob Monkhouse, but uh, there's nobody like me, is there? You know, I'm just an oddball, not because of the material, not because of the act I do, uh, just the way I dress. I mean, 
Do you know the last count was 27 Chubby Brown impersonators? They're even in Australia and South Africa and Canada now. <laughs> so they can't be bad, can it? In a brilliant, and I thought it was fabulous. Absolutely fantastic, first class Chubby Brown. You could get £15 as a clean comic, and you could get £75 to £100 to be a blue comic. And when you, you've got a young family, you've got a wife and a young family, there's no competition, is there? You go for the money. I've never, ever had stars in my eyes. I've never been that type of person. I've always just wanted to earn a living. And, you know, I mean, I said to them, I'll stand on stage and wank off for a £1,000. It's up to you. <laughs> so they said, right, tomorrow night you booked at the Wankers Club. <laughs> well, according to my wife, sex is better on holiday. Yeah. That's the text I just got from her in Benidorm. <laughs> I think political correctness has ruined our business, really. People are too sensitive now. Where's the humour gone? You know, it's just ridiculous. But, you know, you get these left-wingers and the political correct brigade coming straight onto the bank, anything said. They're always trying to down you. Instead, of, it's a laugh. It's a giggle, it's a laugh. I'm not political. I'm not racist, I'm not homophobic, I'm not, I can't be bothered with all that. I mean, a lot of people don't get the humour, and a lot of people are against the humour, but at the end of the day, it's all tongue-in-cheek. It's not who he is, you know what I mean? It's, it's what, he, what he thinks makes people happy and makes people laugh. I don't know. I, I think if you've got time to be that sensitive, I'm not at houses of parliament shouting my mouth off and saying, hey, I, I, uh, I don't agree with this, now. I don't, I couldn't care less. You know, if I had a pound for every time somebody's called me a big, ugly, fat, honky bastard, how much money do you think I'd have? You know, that's what you do. It's a joke. <laughs> I know I'm a cunt, I'm a... <laughs> You know, if you, if you talk to Frankie Boyle or if you talk to any of the controversial comics, they'll probably be able to defend uh, themselves better than I can. Because I don't go into that, you know. I mean, sometimes all comedians have to edit themselves. Sometimes there's jokes about... Sick children. I I don't like to, to crack that, that those jokes. There's jokes about uh, um, you know uh, cancer. I don't want to crack them jokes. And uh, shut that fucking door. I've been a fan of Chubby Brown ever since I was about seven years old or something like that. <laughs> it's about that. It's about that. <laughs> it's about that. My audience have definitely grown up with me. I mean, they, they, I, the times I get the stage door and the kids are saying, "Do you know how long I've waited to see you?" My dad used to play your tapes all the time. My mother thought you were disgusting. Get that off. You know, but the kids love it. And then after all these years, they've had a chance to come and see him. We call them chubby virgins. I've waited 20 years to see this, and it didn't disappoint. It really did. I loved his vulgarity and just been really blunt and weird. It was my sense of humour. It's lovely. It's, I mean, it's kept me going, hasn't it? Uh, this is 47 years I've been doing this job, and they still come to see me. So there must be something there that they like. Phenomenal, Do you know, he's, he's not like anybody else out there. Oh, I thought he was fabulous, yeah. Should have a summer season, maybe. It's supposed to, I've got all these DVDs at home. I think after all this time, and after 30 DVDs, I think I'm calling it a day with the DVDs. I'll still go on tour because I don't know anything else. Yeah, that's the only thing I can do, and I enjoy it. I enjoy making people laugh. And that's the bottom line, really. Oh, I didn't do that just yet. I think he's got a few miles on the fucking clock yet. Absolutely brilliant. Excellent. Hilarious. With your fans, I mean, they put you on the map. I do know comics who say, oh, I can't be bothered with all that. You know, oh, I don't sign autographs enough. And I do know comics, which will be nameless. But uh, I couldn't be like that. They've gladly given me a living. My wife and family have lived off there. Um, Immoral earnings, should we say, for years. Ooh. Pull it tight. <laughs> Pull it tight. Your vagina would on about <laughs> you, you know, you meet these people, they all have a story to tell. We all have ailments, you know, and as you go on over the years, and you, I, I, I get people saying to me, do you know, I've seen you a hundred times. I said, well, do me a favour. Put me suit on and fucking go on <laughs> stage. And let me go and have a pint. What? You fat bastard! <laughs> Best I've seen. Brilliant. Best I've seen. I've never seen him before, but brilliant. I've born in a rough council estate, and it's always been with me, and I'm always aware of that. That's what I love about you, lot. You're just like me, you fucking rougher, aren't you? <laughs> I hit on an idea, 
And I'm, I'm not saying I have, a, I have a gift. I must have a gift for making people laugh, otherwise they wouldn't come back. But other than that, um, yeah, I, I love my job. And that's, that's the bottom line, really. I would recommend anybody come see Roy any time, because he's brilliant. He's upstanding, he's been gone for years. Still a class. Still a class. Do you want your name on it? Yeah, please, to Gareth. Don't hang, up, laugh, don't hang up that helmet, just yet. I can't see me ever walking away from comedy, because uh, it's everything I know, I did the best thing I know. It's what I love doing. I'm on the left, Chubby's on the right. <laughs> I always said, if I pack in, it's because I can't get to the venue. And then, because you always get the clever dicks. Get yourself an helicopter. Fuck off. <laughs> you, know, you know, if I can't get to a venue, then I'll have to pack in. If he ever quits, then it'll be a downer for all the comedians. I, I mean, it, he's just so good. You cannot beat him. You, you know, thank you doesn't seem enough when you're talking about your fans, because after all, they're the ones who's paid your wages. And I don't like asking people for money either. And when we do these charities, which we've done loads of, I, I try to give them something back. Um, I'd, I'd hate to be just saying, oh, give us, give us, give us, give us. We need this, we need that and the other. Life's hard enough as it is. So what I do is I make tapes and cassettes and that. And I, I, the profit of it, I always give to the cancer hospital because between me and you, I've had malaria. Bell's palsy, which is a small stroke. I've had cancer, and I've just had some of my stomach removed. So, and I'm still here. So obviously, I'm meant to be here. Otherwise, I'd be brown bread now. So that's why I keep going back, and I keep, you know, I love just, if that's my thing, that's my thing. Uh, charities, working, being happy is my thing. I just want to be happy. <laughs>